Good morning, guys. It's Carol. How are you? I, I I missed making a video yesterday. I'm just having... I needed a mental health day yesterday. I'm just a basket case for some reason. I'm not doing well, but we're going to have a video today. I'm going to be making... Oh, well, you can't see that. Uh, well, it's crock pot raviolis. I have never had any raviolis other than uh, the kind that comes in the can like SpaghettiOs. <laughs> That's the extent of my ravioli experience. But uh, this recipe calls for the frozen raviolis. So I've got that. Then it calls for a 24 ounce jar of uh, spaghetti sauce. So we like uh, ragu garden combination. Then you, you need a can of diced tomatoes, half a cup Parmesan cheese grated. I don't have that. I'm going to run to the store. A teaspoon of Italian seasoning, a cup of mozzarella cheese, an advertisement on my phone. I hate those. I think that's it anyway. Um, it didn't call for any meat, and I thought it needed some meat, so I have about a half a pound of hamburger in here browning with some onion, and I'm going to get that browned and put it all in the crock pot. It says you just throw the ingredients in there, and that's it, and it's supposed to be done in three hours, so whoopee. Okay. I've got my meat browned with my onions. I've put the teaspoon of Italian seasoning in there. And then it says just dump everything in there. So, throw the raviolis. This is definitely the kind of recipe I need today. Pretty darn simple. I'm going to throw it in here. Okay. You also need a can of diced tomatoes. I'll clean that jar out a little better when I have both hands. And uh, looks like it's that's it. Place ravioli, spaghetti sauce, tomatoes, parmesan cheese, and Italian seasoning in the crock pot and cook on low for three hours. Gently stir twice throughout the cooking. Serve warm and sprinkle mozzarella cheese over the top. Well, there we go. That's going to be our lunch today. We were supposed to have this yesterday, but we ended up having leftovers. So, we're having this today. And I'm glad I had something planned, so I didn't even have to think about it. I'm just I'm just having a day. But anyway, this will be good. I'll let you know after we have lunch. Okay, this is 7 o'clock at night, and I feel a ton better. I was just so exhausted. When the, my daughter and I picked the kids up at three, I immediately, like within seconds, was sound asleep and slept hard until six o'clock when Casey came and woke me up. But anyway, we really liked this ravioli. It was just the six ingredients. That's what we had for lunch. Um, the six ingredients were the raviolis, spaghetti sauce, tomatoes, Italian seasoning, and the two cheeses. Hi. Well, the two kids, Casey and I, really loved that crock pot meal. It was really good, and everybody said they'd like me to make it again. Can't get any simpler than that, just dumping the stuff in the crock pot. Um, the only thing Taylor said was that she wished I had put more meat in it, so next time I would use a pound. I just happened to have a half a pound of meat that I could uh, use today. That <clears throat> was thought out. But yeah, we liked that. Uh, after my nap and after I got awake from that, uh, I'm drinking one of my favorite drinks, which is squirt. I don't know if any of you drink squirt, but I love that. It's so refreshing and it helps wake me up. Um, and the rest of the evening, I plan on finishing this book. It is Vanderbilt, The Rise and Fall of an American Dynasty. By Anderson Cooper and Katherine Howe. 
uh, Anderson Cooper's great 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 grandfather was Cornelius Vanderbilt. Let me tell you a little bit about him. I'm, I'm reading from. Uh, okay. At the beginning of the 19th century, Cornelius Vanderbilt started working at age 11 on his father's small boat ferrying supplies in New York Harbor. And as he grew up, through ruthlessness, cunning, and a pathological desire for money, he built two empires, one in shipping and one in railroads. And that made him the richest man in America at his time. Uh, his <laughs> fortune was fought over by his heirs. <sighs> they didn't have enough money. <laughs> he was the richest man in America. They fought over what he had. Uh, then his son, Billy, doubled the money that Cornelius had left. And then subsequent generations spent it. <laughs> uh, I love... Um, this quote from Mark Twain that's in the book. Poor Vanderbilt, how I pity you. And this is honest. You are an old man and ought to have some rest, and yet you have to struggle and deny yourself and rob yourself of restful sleep and peace of mind because you need money so badly. I always feel for a man who's so poverty-ridden as you. Now, don't misunderstand me, Vanderbilt. I know you own 70 million. But then you know, and I know, that it isn't what a man has that constitutes wealth. No, it is to be satisfied with what you have. That is wealth. Uh, Mark Twain wrote that in Packard's Monthly in March of 1869. I'm going to try to finish it today. It's due Sunday. When I finish it, I'll tell you what I think about it. Uh, I can't imagine having 70 million and then his son doubling that and his ancestors spending it all. <laughs> but anyway, that's what I'm doing this evening. I'm reading this book. Casey just came in. And uh, I don't have earrings on because um, I took them out to sleep and I can't get them back in now. <laughs> but I'll have Casey put them back in and I'll keep wearing them and eventually the holes will stay open. <laughs> uh, what are you guys doing this weekend? It is, it was such a nice day today. What did the, was the high today? 61, I think. The high was 61. Um Last Saturday, our high was 95, so we've gone from summer to fall, <laughs> for sure. Yesterday, there was a wasp trying to get in my patio door so bad. The door was open, but I have that screen that you can stick up. The wasp was on the mini blinds on the patio door. The door was open, and um, the only thing that kept the wasp from coming in was that screen, thank goodness, and I told Red when we were watching it, <laughs> I told Red, usually that means that uh, a frost is coming when the when the hornets want in or wasps. And I didn't even know it was going to get chilly. Casey says we're, we're under a frost advisory for tonight. So I guess we're going to get way down there. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do this weekend other than finish this book. And then I have... Um, a book on CD, also by Anderson Co Anderson Cooper and his mother, Gloria Vanderbilt. So I'm hoping to finish that this weekend as well. And I am thrilled with myself because I ordered my grandkids Christmas today. So I'm done shopping for Christmas. I just buy for the two youngest. Everybody else is an adult, and yet we adults don't exchange gifts. Uh, Red has a birthday in about nine days and Taylor has a birthday next month. So I've got their birthday, got Christmas. I'm through shopping for stuff <laughs> uh, for this year. I, ever since my kids were little, I've tried to have Christmas purchased 
and usually wrapped by the end of October. So I don't have to stress about it in November and December. I don't have to go to Walmart. This was back before, you know, you could do online ordering for groceries when my kids were little. I just don't want to be in Walmart in November and December with a thousand million other people. <laughs> okay, guys, I am going to go now. I will talk to you tomorrow. Sorry I missed yesterday, but I'm back in the saddle again. <laughs> okay, leave me a comment and tell me what you're going to do for the weekend. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Hi. Well, the two kids, Casey and I, really loved that crock pot meal. It was really good, and everybody said they'd like me to make it again. Can't get any simpler than that, just dumping the stuff in the crock pot. Um, the only thing Taylor said was that she wished I had put more meat in it. So next time I would use a pound. I just happened to have a half a pound of meat that I could, uh, use today. <clears throat> that was thought out. But yeah, we liked that. Uh, after my nap and after I got awake from that, uh, I'm drinking one of my favorite drinks, which is squirt. I don't know if any of you drink squirt but I love that it's so refreshing and it helps wake me up um and the rest of the evening I plan on finishing this book it is Vanderbilt the rise and fall of an American dynasty by Anderson Cooper and Catherine Howe uh, Anderson Cooper's great 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 grandfather was Cornelius Vanderbilt let me tell you a little bit about him. I'm, I'm reading from... Uh, okay. At the beginning of the 19th century, Cornelius Vanderbilt started working at age 11 on his father's small boat, ferrying supplies in New York Harbor. And as he grew up, through ruthlessness, cunning, and a pathological desire for money, he built two empires, one in shipping and one in railroads, and that made him the richest man in America at his time. Uh, his <laughs> fortune was fought over by his heirs. <laughs> they didn't have enough money. <laughs> he was the richest man in America. They fought over what he had. Uh, then his son, Billy, doubled the money that Cornelius had left. And then subsequent generations spent it. <laughs> uh, I love um, this quote from Mark Twain that's in the book. Poor Vanderbilt, how I pity you. And this is honest. You are an old man and ought to have some rest and yet you have to struggle and deny yourself and rob yourself of restful sleep and peace of mind because you need money so badly. I always feel for a man who's so poverty ridden as you. Now don't misunderstand me, Vanderbilt. I know you own 70 million. But then you know, and I know, that it isn't what a man has that constitutes wealth. No. It is to be satisfied with what you have. That is wealth. Uh, Mark Twain wrote that in Packard's Monthly in March of 1869. I'm going to try to finish it today. It's due Sunday. When I finish it, I'll tell you what I think about it. Uh, I can't imagine having $70 million and then his son doubling that and his ancestors spending it all. <laughs> but anyway, that's what I'm doing this evening. I'm reading this book. Casey just came in. And uh, I don't have earrings on because um, I took them out to sleep. And I can't get them back in now. <laughs> but I'll have Casey put them back in. And I'll keep wearing them. And eventually the holes will stay open. <laughs> Uh, what are you guys doing this weekend? It is, it was such a nice day today. What did the, was the high today? 61, I think. The high was 61. Um, 
last Saturday, our high was 95, so we've gone from summer to fall, <laughs> for sure. Yesterday, there was a wasp trying to get in my patio door so bad. The door was open, but I have that screen that you can stick up. The wasp was on the mini blinds on the patio door. The door was open, and um, the only thing that kept the wasp from coming in was that screen, thank goodness. And I told Red when we were watching it, <laughs> I told Red, usually that means that uh, a frost is coming when the, when the hornets went in or wasps. And I didn't even know it was going to get chilly. Casey says we're, we're under a frost advisory for tonight. So I guess we're going to get way down there. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do this weekend other than finish this book. And then I have... Um, a book on CD, also by Anderson Co Anderson Cooper and his mother, Gloria Vanderbilt. So I'm hoping to finish that this weekend as well. And I am thrilled with myself because I ordered my grandkids Christmas today. So I'm done shopping for Christmas. I just buy for the two youngest. Everybody else is an adult, and, and the, we adults don't exchange gifts. Uh, Red has a birthday in about nine days, and Taylor has a birthday next month. So I've got their birthday, got Christmas, I'm through shopping for stuff <laughs> uh, for this year. I Ever since my kids were little, I've tried to have Christmas purchased and usually wrapped by the end of October so I don't have to stress about it in November and December. I don't have to go to Walmart. This was back before you know, you could do online ordering for groceries when my kids were little. I just don't want to be in Walmart in November and December with a thousand million other people. <laughs> okay, guys, I am going to go now. I will talk to you tomorrow. Sorry I missed yesterday, but I'm back in the saddle again. <laughs> okay, leave me a comment and tell me what you're going to do for the weekend. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.